Hello and welcome back to the Homemade Haven. Today we wanted to take you guys along on our Airbnb turnover. Some of you may know from previous videos that we own an Airbnb here locally to us. And as of right now, we completely manage it and clean it. Um, we check people in and check people out ourselves. That may change as we add other um, properties to our portfolio in the future, but for now we're maintaining it ourselves. And we've had a lot of questions from friends and family, um, just wondering how we operate our Airbnb, what kind of tips and tricks we have, um, what kind of advice, the things that we offer as far as amenities. So we thought we'd take you guys along today to show you just what we put into our Airbnb and what works for us. So these guests that just checked out have been here for two months straight. So we have a lot of people that stay for weeks at a time being here in a very transient city. We are one of, or we are the largest uh, Marine Corps base amphibious base or something but anyways um, so there's a lot of military families that are coming in for visiting lots of military families that are um, in between housing in between jobs that sort of thing so most of our guests have stayed for more than just the two night minimum they've stayed for a couple weeks and some even for a couple of months so um, those kind of stays are fine with us we don't really mind it gives us a little bit of a break in between the cleaning so we're not over here several times a week having to clean it and turn it over for new guests so we haven't been in here in two months these people also had what they claimed as a service dog that stayed with them we legally cannot ask for any paperwork or proof to um to prove that so we're praying that um, they were you know honest about it and that there isn't any pet damage and um, that they left it in good condition so let's go in and see what we're dealing with oh okay first impression Looks like they kept it in really good condition. Really? Yes. Thankfully, these guests left the house in great condition. I don't see any um, evidence that a pet has been in here, so that's what we want because we have a very strict no pet policy. But, you know, with service animals, that's something that we can't discriminate against or um, ask for proof or anything like that. So we just kind of have to take them at their word. And thankfully, it looks like um, they had a very well behaved animal. And it looks like they followed all of the house rules as far as cleaning things out and putting things back how they belong. So I'll run through that here in a minute with you guys. Um, but first of all, something that we recommend for Airbnb owners is a digital keypad system. So this is a Wi-Fi enabled door locking mechanism. So we have an app on our phone that we can set different codes. Um, what we typically do is take the guests last four of their phone number and make that their door code. So when they come to check in, we don't have to be here to meet them. They just enter their code on the door. We have it to where it starts at a certain time um, around check in time and it ends at a at another certain time and date um, after their checkout. This is something that's completely hands off for us. Um, I believe the whole system cost us about 200 bucks. Um, so it's a little pricey up front, but it's definitely worth it for the convenience. I think we can program endless amounts of numbers into it. There are some systems that you can only program like five different combinations in it, um, but this is one that we have unlimited amount of numbers that we can put into it. And then we have our own master number that works at all times. So this is definitely top of our Airbnb must have lists. Up next, we have our utility closet. This is just a door that we have a keyed lock entry on um, so that we can store all of our supplies, all of our 
linens, extra things like that, toilet paper, um, stuff that we don't want the guests having full access to. Um, you will be surprised how many people will try to take extra rolls of toilet paper and um, toiletry kits and those sorts of things that you leave out. So if you don't want it taken, my advice is to store it away. So that's definitely next on our top Airbnb must have list. Something else we recommend getting for your Airbnb or rental properties is an ozone machine. Um, this is something that we didn't think about in the very beginning, but after having a guest that came in and smoked in our house, um, it was something that we had to get a hold of um, because as most of you know, the smoke smell isn't something that goes away very easily or quickly. So we bought our ozone machine for about $100, I believe, on Amazon. It really wasn't too expensive, but definitely worth the money. Um, we set it up inside the house for about 12 hours, I believe it was, and it completely eliminated the smell of smoke. So definitely worth the investment um, to keep on hand. Thankfully, like I said, these guests were really good guests and there are no foul smells. Um, it can be used for even when people come in here and cook bacon or fried chicken or fish or something. You just, you want your, your property to smell fresh and clean when people come in. They don't want to smell somebody's breakfast from the morning before. So um, definitely worth the investment. So another thing that we highly suggest getting is a ring doorbell. You may have heard of these already. It's just a camera doorbell. And what it'll do is actually detect motion in front of the doorbell. So this is good for preventing theft or burglary, or at least catching the face or video of somebody that is attempting to do it. Um, but also it helps us to be able to have a live view of who is coming in and out of the house. So we have a capacity rule on our house of just four guests and anybody above that we do charge an extra cleaning fee for. So um, we also don't want any kind of parties or um, minors or anything like that in here making a mess or a ruckus. So the door, the ring doorbell has really helped us with that. Um, usually when people see it, they're a little more um, conservative. And so that's worked in our favor. And just for the, the pure peace of mind of having eyes on our property at all times, we can just flip open the app and look and see what's going on here whenever we want to. As far as decor goes, we just keep it very simple. Just a couple of pieces to bring some pops of color and the, the theme feel that you're going for. Um, the more that you have out, the more cleaning that you have to do, first of all, and also the more things that you risk getting damaged or stolen. Um, so we just kind of put the bare minimum enough to make it feel homey. And um, we don't spend a ton of money on these things. We look for used or thrifted items or things that have been marked down. Um, you just never know if something is going to get broken or taken and it's just not worth investing a ton of money into. So a lot of times guests will rearrange some of these things depending on the length of their stay. Make sure that the items are, you know, not super valuable. And if you have items such as taller TV stands or other pieces of furniture, make sure that you anchor those into the wall so that they don't get moved around. And if you have smaller children staying, that they're nothing that can be pulled on top of them um, or on top of anybody else for that matter. As far as small children staying in the house, we like to have a few amenities for people. Um, so in case they're flying into the area or don't have a lot of packing room that we have some things to help accommodate them. Um, so we have a small booster seat high chair and also a pack and play that we keep in the closet. These are just nice, easy things to have on hand um, in case your guest maybe forgot them or needs them, um, as well as some kid-friendly books or games so that your little ones have something to occupy them and keep them busy other than your home decor and remotes and other things that you really don't want them messing up while they're here. So one thing that we did not skimp out on was the quality of our mattresses. 
We didn't spend a ton of money on the furniture and furnishings and decorations, but we know that the mattress is really important. So we went with kind of like a middle of the road mattress, not necessarily the cheapest one, but not their most expensive one either. Um, but just a good solid mattress that people are gonna come here and have a good night's sleep on. Um, they're more likely to leave a better review if they got a good night's sleep. So don't skimp out on your mattresses. We also recommend buying at least two sets of sheets per bed and two sets of comforters per bed as well. And at least eight towels, washcloths, and hand towels per bathroom. So what we like to do is keep half of them at our house or if you have an extra storage space in your rental that you can lock up and keep, um, you can keep them there, but our closet is very small here. So we usually just keep the extras at home um, but this will expedite your cleaning process. So when we come in, we just take all of the dirty linens, load them in the car, and replace them with all the clean linens. So we don't have to sit here and wait for things to wash. Um, we can just go ahead and make the beds and then take all the dirty stuff home and wash at our leisure and bring back again whenever it's time to do another changeover. So, so once our guests have entered their code and, and come into the house, we have a welcome basket that is located in our kitchen on the countertop. It has a check-in sheet and a check-out sheet. It just has some of the information that they need while they're here as far as like the Wi-Fi name and password and some of our quick instructions as far as like what to set the thermostat on when they leave. Um, what to do with the linens, with the trash, the refrigerator, that sort of thing. Um, we have our guests go ahead and strip the beds for us, put everything in the bathtubs so that it's just easy for us to pick them up and take out. Um, we have them set the air to something that's not gonna be running all the time until we get back over here. Um, we have them go ahead and start the dishwasher and take all of the trash out. So we ask them to empty the refrigerator and freezer or any other kind of food and just go ahead and take it out to the trash can outside. Um, and so far, most of our guests are happy to do that and take care of stuff very well. And like I said, these guests were very easy to work with and really took care of the place. So we're very happy with that. In our welcome basket, we have our check-in sheet we have a guest book in case anybody wants to write in there. We put some dishwashing tabs, some laundry tabs, some extra trash bags, um, some cloths, towels for drying dishes and wiping things down, and also some coffee packets. Um, so we usually give most guests about two of each of these things. Um, if they're staying longer, you know, most people are gonna buy the stuff that they need to, so we really only accommodate for like the two night stay um, on our behalf. Now in our bathrooms, we do provide a little hygiene kit that has a small shampoo, conditioner, and soap in it. Um, and we provide one pack per bathroom as well as an extra roll of toilet paper per bathroom as well. Um, like I mentioned before, if you leave more than that, people are going to put it in their suitcase and take home. So um, if they need more than that, if they're staying for longer, then like I said, they will probably buy their own. And we've had several guests over the past few months that have bought extra stuff and just left it here. So um, we leave those out for any guests that might need them. Um, those are things that we didn't buy, so we don't regulate them. Um, if they want to take a whole package of paper towels that somebody else left here, then, you know, that's on them. That's not out of our pocket, so not a really big deal. As far as the check-in, check-out process, that's really about it. Um, so for the cleaning, we usually start at the back of the house and work our way towards the front door on our way out. So in this particular house, the very back room is the master bathroom. So we'll start by go ahead and taking the sheets and stuff out of the bathtub, spraying everything down, getting the cleaner going, um, and go ahead and scrub it down, do the floors, and then move to the master bedroom. Go ahead and switch out linens on the bed, wipe down all of the surfaces, um, 
and vacuum the floors on our way out. Now with the whole pandemic that's going on, we do try to take a little bit extra precautions as far as disinfecting and that sort of thing, um, which we were doing before because it just seems like a good hygienic thing to do in my opinion anyways. So we take um, disinfecting wipes and wipe down all of the surfaces that get touched. So that's your light switches, your remotes, um, your lamp switches, um, knobs, doorknobs, cabinet knobs, um, the thermostat, anything that's going to have hands that touch on it um, repeatedly need to be wiped down. And that's not just for, um, you know, the virus that's floating around right now, but for any other kind of virus that is out there. It's just good common um, cleaning practice. One thing that is super important in your Airbnb is to make sure that it is sparkling clean. So I don't know about you, but when I go somewhere and stay, I like for it to feel clean and fresh. I don't wanna see um, toothpaste on the mirror or on the sink. I don't wanna see hairs laying around. Um, I want it to be completely clean whenever I come in and know that I don't have to worry about any germs or anybody's leftover paraphernalia, which, you know, having a farm, I know it's not as unhygienic as what it looks, but you want your guests to be really impressed and um, feel like they are in a perfectly clean environment that will give you extra stars on your rating. So very important. Um, if you are not a meticulous cleaner, like what I am, um, it might be best to go ahead and hire a cleaning crew and just have it done right. All right, you ready to get started? No. She's not too thrilled to help out, but little does she know, this is teaching her some very valuable skills as far as how to keep a tidy house, how to run a business, and how to save and manage money. So she can definitely earn money here as long as she puts in good work today. Am I right? Oh, there you are. So we'll see how she does. All right, so first room first. We're gonna start back here in the master bathroom. As you can see, all of the linens are put into the bathtub here. So we'll unload those and put them in our laundry basket. Um, we'll go ahead and spray everything down, get the cleaners working. Um, and then we'll start to scrub everything down. Um, another thing to possibly think about having extra on hand are rugs. We live close to a beach and a lot of people come here to visit the beach. So our rugs tend to get really dirty. Um, so I bought extra rugs for each bathroom. So again, like I said, once we come in, if we want to just take those rugs with us home, wash them and then put the clean ones down, we can, we have that option. Um, it's not like a necessity every single time, but we like to have options. So this one here. Yes, hello. Usually as soon as we arrive, I have her go ahead and check all of the drawers um, the closets, cabinets, underneath the beds, all the nook and crannies to make sure that nothing was left behind or um, overlooked whenever the people were checking out. So um, we just like to know that each guest that's coming in is starting off with a completely clean slate um, and doesn't have anybody's leftovers to greet them when they get here. So. We're going to get started on this back room and work our way towards the front door.
If you really want to wow your guests, try making your toilet paper look fancy. Here's one way you can do that. Okay, so first what you want, you're gonna wanna do is take one piece off and set it to the side. You don't need that till later. And then fold this piece up like this, fold it in half, and then take the corners and go about halfway. You can go a little over and then tuck them in like that. And then do the same on this side. Like that. And we'll have a nice little point there. And then you'll take you'll set that to the side. Take this little piece over here. And you'll just kind of like keep folding it forwards and flip it over and back. Like that. Forwards and back. And if you're wondering, no, I am not good at origami. Forwards, back, all the way down. Okay, once you have it all folded up, it should look something like this. Just a thing. So, now what you're gonna do is fold this in half, long ways, and then pinch at the bottom, hold that at the bottom, and then unfurl the top, if that's a word. And it should look like a little fan. And then what you're gonna do is bring this back over, hold the fan a little high, higher up than what I had it, like this, and then just tuck the fan in this little pouch and then it'll be unfurled in the pouch and the pouch might come undone just tuck it back in and voila you have a nice little flower in a pouch i think is what it's supposed to be All right, so we got everything all cleaned and restocked and ready for our next guest. So I'll give you guys a quick walkthrough of what everything looks like when it's all set up and ready for people to come in, completely clean and ready to go. Walk through the front door into our living room area here. We have a little coat closet where we keep the high chair and vacuum. They have a, an electric fireplace. We've got a little reading nook with a lamp. Our smart TV so they can watch their own Netflix, YouTube, Hulu, that sort of thing so that we don't pay for any kind of cable. We just provide Wi-Fi internet, couch and remote, table. We actually use this crate to hide our Wi-Fi router because the plug is there on the wall. So, got some little decorations. Come into the kitchen here. And this is a fully stocked kitchen. So we have all of the glasses, utensils, plates, everything that they'll need during their stay. Um, we do also provide a fire extinguisher and first aid kit down there, which are pluses to have. And then here is the completed welcome kit, like I was mentioning before. And then washer and dryer. And then a quick peek in the backyard. Nice little fire pit area and fenced in backyard, perfect for kids. Um, we do have a little shed over there next to the house um, and then another shed for the hot water heater. If you live somewhere like 
a beach or somewhere that has some local shops or something like that, you might wanna consider providing bicycles or something that people can use to get around. Little um, special touches like that really stick out to people. So the shed would be a great place to store those. So we come down this hallway and this is our locked utility closet with our cleaning supplies and extra linens. We have the first room, which has two twin beds and just a simple little dresser with drawers there. Lamp, very basic. We keep everything white so that we can bleach if we need to. Here's the guest bathroom. The towels are stocked ready. They've got their um, soap and hygiene kit. Then we come into the master. And the master bathroom here. So fresh toilet paper, fresh trash bags, fresh rugs. We even switched out our shower liners. These are um, actually called hookless is the brand. It's a snap-on liner and these are actually really convenient. So if it gets nasty on the inside, you can just snap it off and put a clean one on and then take the other one home and swap it out whenever you come back. So that's really it. It's very basic, very simple. Um, it has everything that somebody should need for a short-term stay. People have added stuff during their stays in the past. Um, like I said, the last guest left us a little pop-up toaster. So that's, you know, a nice amenity for somebody else down the road. So we'll just leave it and let somebody else benefit from it. Um, but that's really it for the turnover here. Um, today took a little bit longer because like I said, it was a two month long rental. Um, so, you know, it's two months without cleaning. So there was a lot of scrubbing to do, but overall great condition. So I'm just going to grab the mop and mop my way out the front door and head on home. We definitely have our work cut out for us over the next couple days trying to get all this laundry cleaned up but anyways I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was helpful gave you some tips and tricks on how to get your Airbnb set up and um, how to turn it over in a very professional and easy way um, if you have any questions or comments about how we run ours, please put them in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer them for you. And we'll do a future video on specifically the app and the admin side of things um, if you guys are interested in that. So if you enjoyed this, give us a like, share it with your friends who might need the information or might be interested. And um, we look forward to seeing you next time.